So this is the most immersive sim racing experience I have ever had. And I think it might actually be the most immersive sim racing experience you can get in the world right now. Just, you know, budget, no issue. Access to equipment, no issue. I think this might be the pinnacle. And I know so many of you have asked me to show you a race like this so you can just live it and experience it. So here we go. It's going to be quite incredible, I think, for you to see this footage. Just to explain the setup, I've got a top of the range PC, so an RTX 4090. You cannot get a better graphics card than that. I've got Intel 13900K, top of the range, top of the range RAM, storage, all that kind of stuff. Running a set of cords Compensione, and I'm running it in VR in a top of the range Pimax Crystal headset. Everything is bought with my own money apart from the Pimax Crystal, that's a free loan unit. Very important you know that. And obviously, let's talk about the spray. Let's talk about what I'm experiencing here and if it's one-to-one, -one, because this looks pretty incredible, right? I mean, you might be thinking, how the hell have I just got a Peau Rouge there when you can't really see too much? So there is a subtle difference between what you're seeing on screen and what you experience in the headset. And the best way for me to explain that is with the rain lights. So the rain lights and the brake lights, they really do sort of penetrate more through the mist and the fog when you're in the headset, because it's a three-dimensional space that you're in. So you can sense distance, you can see the way those brake lights are illuminating and that gives you really, um, what's the word, really sort of uh, natural reference points. You can subconsciously know where everything is. You're not trying to interpret pixels on the screen. You just very subconsciously know where you are in, in relation to other objects around you. And that makes navigating here and driving here a lot easier. Like, this would be very difficult to drive in in 2D. And I'm not a crazy good driver. My background, by the way, is, is, is karting. So I've driven in these sort of conditions, in karting, monsoon conditions, where actually the rain is going onto my visor, and I'll link some karting footage in the description or something so you can see what it's like in karting. Here, obviously, it's going onto the windscreen and we have a, a windshield wiper, but you really do end up in situations like this where you can't really see too much and you are very much relying on other senses, uh, particularly hearing, you're, you're listening to that wheel spin. And uh, that's something that you get in the sim as good in real life. There is no delay with the sound. So it doesn't matter that it's, it's simulated. That's a, pretty much a one-to-one -one thing. The sensation of the car sort of uh, shifting around as you lose grip, that is a bit different here. We're getting it through the force feedback. We're not feeling it through the seat of our pants. But as we go through this video, have a look at how I am driving, sort of the inputs, the corrections I'm making. And definitely if you're thinking about going into a level of sim racing like this that definitely requires like a, a lot of investment so you, you've got to know that you're really going to enjoy it you can kind of see how i'm driving here so coming up behind the 488 we're also in a 488 gt3 and i'm listening now trying to hear the echoes of the um you can, i feel like you can hear the car noise or sort of bounce against barriers sometimes don't know if that's a uh, a, a placebo affecting game but definitely in real life you can hear that and appreciate it. So going up the inside here into the bus stop and cars just sort of come out of the spray, it feels like. But I'm super comfortable. I know where the distance is. I've said this in previous VR videos, especially with the Pimax Crystal, because it is so high definition. When you're running it with this PC, I don't know what it's like when you don't run it with this sort of PC. Everything feels very one-to-one. -one. It's very relaxing. I look, I look very relaxed. And this is how I try to be when I'm karting, if you look at my 360 footage. Just try and be relaxed. My heart rate is not really going up too high. I'm not breathing heavily. I'm just trying to stay in control and interpret all this data. I need to maximise my brain sort of throughput to assess everything so I can drive to my best ability, make good decisions. As we almost hit the back of the Lamborghini there. Important not to get frustrated as well, by the way, when you're racing. If you get frustrated and flustered, some people seem to be able to dial into it. I prefer to just try and stay cool and, and, and keep making good decisions because ultimately that's what racing is. I'm trying to hit the braking markers I want to hit, adjust my braking markers, decide when to fight, when not to fight. We'll see here, we'll just uh, ease off the brake, go a little bit deeper into Le Coombe, get that position back from the Mercedes. See, I'm listening, he's still there. You can hear just sort of a, a snarly grunt from that AMG and he gets through. It's important to regroup, see if we can try and get to the front of this particular race. It's dynamic weather conditions as well in ATC, so it will be changing ever so slightly. It's dynamic time of day as well. But hopefully now you can you're sort of, sort of starting to appreciate maybe how you can look through that spray and uh, work out where you I, I've driven this track so many times. I've been here in real life as well. I, I know 
the lay of the land literally so again that's a relaxing experience if i was going to a track i didn't know this would just be horrendous as we go up the inside are we going to go a little bit deep yes we do and uh, and now so now you see that the spray just adds an extra degree of realism and difficulty which i very much enjoy because in the dry it would just be like doing another lap here but this is very much different see that both of us actually got on that uh, curb there which looked to be wet and we go deep no gravel there try and slot back in that's a great thing i was playing Le Mans ultimate a lot recently and there's no the mirrors there are not great the look to turn is not great it's so instinctive in vr and it feels fair you know if you can't see a car and you're looking over then you can you need to try and work out where the car could be that you can't see it Whereas if you're playing a game and you don't have a look left and right map, you don't know where the car is. It feels a little bit unfair. I hope that made sense. It's a bit of a subtle point. I tend to make a lot of subtle points in my videos. And people who don't watch all the way through tend to miss the subtle points. I find sometimes. But I know you're watching right now. So put a rain emoji in the chat. I, I love doing this. Put a rain emoji in the chat if you've got this far. As we go into the bus stop again at Spa. It looks like the rain might be getting a little bit heavier. And uh, this, that really is a moment where you are sort of going into the unknown. That I don't have a lot of data to process and understand how many cars are ahead in the bus stop, who's turning in. Because I'm dealing with too much right in front of me. I can't sort of work out what's going on four cars ahead. Here we can see two different sort of spray lines. It's like a Lamborghini Huracan. It's a fun game to play. Is that when can you identify... Oh, it's not a Lamborghini Huracan. It's a Porsche 911 GT3 fun game to play is like when you can work out what car is ahead of you when you can't but if you were to show this screen if you just screenshot this right now and show it to someone they might assume there's no cars ahead of you but we know because we're in the race and we're dialed in so it's, it's funny how that works really isn't it it's sort of we're seeing stuff that other people would not see because we're racing drivers and we're in the context of the race and it's like again he's gone a little bit left there and sort of spun off tends to be a wet patch there even in Gran Turismo I've noticed there's often a wet patch at the top of it's Radion actually definitely want to get that one right and coming into Lake Hume again see I'm sort of see how calm and smooth I'm trying to be with all of my inputs here so if you were if you looked at my footage of my camera here in isolation you might think that I'm driving a sort of uh, apart from that moment <laughs> a hatchback down to the shops and it's um, incredible when you look at there's a lot of drivers i speak to now sort of real world lmp2 hypercar gt3 drivers i chat with them and you know they're just normal people at many levels like you and i but then they go in and you you look at the car from the outside of the camera and it looks like they're superhuman but they're not they're just applying the same principles people like louis delatraz jack aitkin Albert Costa, you know, Rui Andrade, these are incredible drivers, but they're very down to earth, actually. In fact, all of those drivers I listed there are very down to earth drivers who have who have gone up the ranks and you know not none of them necessarily born into it, if that makes sense. So coming up the inside here, can we catch up with that blue AMG? And I mean what an experience. Like I said, I, I don't think it gets better than this right now. We'll have to see when Tempest launches in iRacing and I will do a comparison because I know you love the comparison videos and I actually quite enjoy making them. I'm very nerdy like that. And also Le Mans Ultimate will, will add proper rain soon. Well, at some point, I understand. Ren Sport seems to be complete vaporware and some people are saying it's a money laundering thing, which I, I wouldn't say, but that's what some people say. But right now, this is where I think you want to be if you want to have that ultimate. And also, one point I want to make is that this is a very low friction setup like right setting up the Pimax crystal took a while the first time to calibrate it and make sure everything's charged and even connect all the cables it's not easy it's not simple not like the psvr2 but actually getting into this race actually was really simple acc just works through steam i had to do one calibration of the headset which was to just put it in front of me and then put it on the floor so it knows the height it then automatically adjusts the pupil distance so it has little motors i think that adjust it and then you're just good to go you're straight in there you're good to go there's no faffing about you know we know acc just works so if you're someone like me who's working during the week and you might have a couple of evenings a week that you want to race you've got you know kids that rare to get time away from them and the wife and everything or maybe you are a wife and you're trying to get away from the husband 
Or maybe you're a wife and you're trying to get away from the wife. Many, many different ways to cut that cloth these days, which is great. But this is a setup where you can fairly reliably just pick up the headset and, and go and race. And for me, that's, that is so critical. It's something that reviewers don't pick up on because they live in this bubble where they often get stuff for free. It's the flavour of the day for them. They'll make some videos purely for views. Being a little bit harsher maybe, but characterise it. Purely for views and they'll move on to the next thing. They'll never, they'll never live with it. But for me, the setup and stuff is really important. It's why I still play PSVR 2 to this day because it's always connected to my PlayStation. It's just a one-click thing to get it going. And there's many things I don't really use. Like I had a wireless microphone. I don't really use it because it's got a micro USB charger and I don't have a lot of those lying around at the moment. And you know, I should do a video on stuff I don't use, but this is, this is a pretty cool setup. And that's why I'm literally making this video for you right now. So we go up the inside of the Audi R8 there. I think this is the last lap by the way. So we might be winning this race. I don't think any cars ahead of us. As we go past the advert for the Fanatec Podium. Which I'm not sure, do they still sell the Podium? And is there a car ahead of us? Oh yes there is, there is a car ahead of us. So we'll see how close we can get to it. That was an over rev there, over boost, whatever it's called. And a really satisfying driving experience. You can see that my driving is... I think I drive better in ACC in VR fundamentally. I say better, not faster, because these are all still video games. So... Driving realistically is different to driving fast. Um, in the same way that people speedrun Tetris, you can be a, a very good... Oh, I've lost my camera here. Oh, there we go. We're back again. Went into the void. But this is just a really immersive experience. I really hope you're enjoying this footage. If you want to see more, you, you do... Please, please do like the video and leave a comment. Make sure you're subscribed. Because that just gives me all the signals to know that you want to see more of these. Otherwise, I don't know coming into the bus stop now I think it's going to be the last lap but we'll, we'll have a look and, and make sure so two cars ahead of us maybe it's a it's a p3 so far so I keep I, d I do apologize for keep going into the ether can we see there's a checker flag there we go well I'm gonna put some more videos around here so if you enjoyed this go check out these other videos and like I said let me know if you want to see more I'll see you next time